Okay, so we just got finished discussing the basic rule for assigning hybridization, but I mentioned that the rule does not always work. There's an important exception to that rule, which you need to understand in order to use Hickel's rule to determine uh, aromaticity. So here is the exception to the rule. If an atom has one or more lone pairs and is attached to an sp2 atom, then the atom is also sp2. So again, this is the exception to the rule for determining hybridization that we just talked about. If an atom, one, has one or more lone pairs and two, is attached to an sp2 atom, then the atom is also sp2. Let's look at some examples. What is the hybridization of this carbon? That should be easy, using the rules we already talked about. This is sp3. This is an sp3 carbon. Notice that this exception doesn't apply to this carbon because it doesn't have any lone pairs, for one thing. What is the hybridization of this carbon? Well, again, this exception does not apply to this carbon. Now, this carbon does have a lone pair, but it's not attached to an sp2 atom. This atom up here is sp3, so we don't have the second condition here. So this is simply a normal sp3 atom, as we've been discussing using the basic rule for hybridization. And what is the hybridization of this carbon? Well, this carbon does have a lone pair, which is our condition one, and this carbon also is attached to an sp2 atom. That's our condition two, because it's attached to this atom up here. This atom up here is sp2. We know that double bonded carbons are sp2. So we've satisfied these two conditions over here. Therefore, this atom is also sp2. This carbon is sp2. Now notice that you wouldn't have gotten this right if you didn't know about this exception. If you were just using the rule that we've been talking about, you would think this was sp3. But because it's got a lone pair and it's connected to another sp2 atom, this atom is also sp2. So like I said, uh, I think a lot of people in OCHEM uh, learn about the rule for hybridization, but some, somehow they never quite learn about this exception. So I want to spend a few minutes going through some examples uh, that will help us to make sure that we've got this exception down. Com uh, it would be a good idea to compare these three examples. Here we have a normal sp3 carbon, a normal sp3 carbon, but this one, we have the exception kicks in, and it's going to be sp2. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Well, the exception does not apply here. We do have a lone pair, but this atom is not attached to an sp2 atom. This atom is attached to an sp3 atom. This carbon is sp3, so this carbon on the right is not attached to an sp2 atom, so the exception does not apply. We just use our normal rule, and this carbon is also sp3. It's true that there's an sp2 carbon over here, but that's too far away. So notice, in order for this exception to kick in, the atom you're focusing on has to be actually attached to the sp2 atom. It's not good enough to be attached to an atom that is itself attached to the sp2. That's too far away. 
what's the hybridization of this nitrogen? It has a lone pair, and it's attached to an sp2 atom. So, the exception applies in this case. This atom must also be sp2. If all you knew about was the rule that we talked about before, you might think this would be sp3, but now that we've learned about the exception, we know that this is actually sp2. What's the hybridization of this nitrogen? Well, now we have a lone pair, but we're not attached to an sp2 atom. We're attached to an sp3 atom, so the exception does not apply, and this is a normal sp3 nitrogen using our normal rule. What's the hybridization of this oxygen? Well, it does have one or more lone pairs, and it's attached to an sp2 atom over here on the right. So both of these conditions from our exception apply. So using the exception, this oxygen would be sp2. Again, if this was not an sp2 carbon over here, we would actually think that this was an sp3. Uh, this would be an sp3 oxygen. So notice, it doesn't matter how many lone pairs the atom has. Uh, as long as it has one or more lone pairs, it can satisfy this first condition. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Well, the exception does not apply here uh, because there's no lone pairs. So we just use our normal rule. This is an sp3 carbon. Now notice that this carbon does satisfy our second condition. This carbon is attached to an sp2 atom. But that's not good enough. You have to be attached to an sp2 atom and have one or more lone pairs. So please keep in mind that in order for this exception to apply, the atom has to satisfy both condition 1 and condition 2. If it, only has, if it only satisfies one of them, we don't use the exception. We just use the normal rule for hybridization that we learned about a few minutes ago. Okay, now though we know about the rule and we know about this exception. We've gone through a bunch of examples, so hopefully now you're getting comfortable with when this exception applies.